Hey, everybody. Hello, hello. I'm back. A little quick episode, a little quick moment on uh, Easter Sunday. Good morning. Um, this is Child the Podcast. Look, Child the Podcast, that name might be changed. I'm still searching and finding my way through this podcast journey. Um, I feel like I'm definitely more, I'm not relaxed, I'm more, I guess, audio, um, audible-wise, I'm more relaxed. Um, Let's talk about a music, musical album from Karen Clark shared today. I was like le- last night. I was listening to um, the Resurrection, and I realized, oh, this song is about the Resurrection. So I was like, let me go ahead and give a little review on one of my favorite albums, an album I do listen to all the time. Well, not all the time, but I do listen to frequently from Karen Clark shared and the album is called Destined to Win, and it is. I believe this was her first, or maybe it was her second. I keep forgetting her first or second. Um, well, wait, okay, it's probably her first live album. Yeah, I think it was her first live album, and I think this album was a full live album. I know most of her albums, except for that studio album where she it was like 2010, I think, where she had the duet with um, Dorinda on there. Um, I think that was a, her first album that wasn't like a live album or had live songs on there. Uh, most of the songs, most of the albums that she's had are like live and then studio uh, songs, regular songs. But I think this is the first one that is like fully live or at least like sounds like it's fully live some of them are is a little questionable but mostly or i think maybe they put like went back and put effects in it um in post-production or something like that but this album destined to win her first live album from the Carew, her Carew um label which is her label that her and her son put together and um what's about to say about that Carew her first live album I forgot I, it was something I was going to say um, but oh oh that the uh, I think the distribu- distribution is with one okay wait what do they call it one live one or one live live one or one entertainment one of those I know you see and they have like a green symbol and then like they used to have like um, it's like a zoom a little sound effect that they have with their um their symbol on their like products and stuff. They used to have like interviews and um singing and music videos. They'll like pr- uh, put them on like their channel or something like that. Or I guess they'll like produce them or something. Or they'll just show them on their little platform. Uh, I'm not. I guess they still they're still with One Nation or whatever. Remember when one. Um, Live Nation became like a record label in a sense, and they had like Madonna and Jay Z, and was that it? I forget if they were like three hundred and sixty deals, but they were definitely like we we don't want to be with the label anymore. Let's go like sort of independent in a way. Also, this album is considered independent. I think yeah, this album is considered independent. I was like the Clark Sisters. No, they're not independent. They are with Motown. Motown, I think it's called Motown Legacy. It's funny the names that they um <laughs> that they put on these older artists. Motown Legacy and then Def Jam's had Def Def Jam classics where like Patty was and like the mid two thousands. It's funny that the um the names they put. Okay, let's talk about um, Destined to Win. This whole album was produced by Donald Lawrence. And, like, in an interview I saw, um, that was, like, consuming information about the album. Because I wasn't really paying attention to... Is this on? Okay, I was making sure this was recording. I wasn't really paying attention to um, Karen at 
during this time, I definitely was aware. Well, I wasn't really aware, really. I think my sister was more into the Clark sisters and them during, like, 2015. Just, like, the last couple of years. Like, I've always... Okay, let me give you a little Karen Clark history of me. There is one of my favorite... Okay, there's, like, two songs I remember growing up. <clears throat> growing up. <clears throat> and, like, it was, like, 90. Yeah, it had to be, like, 98, 99, 2000, 2001-ish. Where, um... My, every Sunday, my mom would have our BET, and they would play, uh, what's his name? They would play, <clears throat> they would play Mr. Oh, man. I can't believe I can't remember this. You guys know. If you know, you know. BET back in the day, they would play Homeboys. Um music videos he had his own show and I, it was like a music video show and the two songs i remember was long as i got king jesus by um vicky winans that video very theatrical that always caught my attention that is one of my favorite gospel songs and a song that's like really near and dear to my heart also bomb and gilead is another one that always played which again like for some reason being a part of my childhood like it's like it's a part of my like heart it's me it's in me um that's my first uh introduction to karen at that time like bomb and gilead i play easily when i'm in the mood when i'm in the mood because the song is pretty long <laughs> the song is really long um but shout out to the clark sisters because i think did she write that i don't know if she wrote that i don't think twinkie wrote bomb and gilead gilead um, but shout out to them because uh, it was a remix but like pretty much all of like Donald Lawrence doings he's a great like a remixer from what I can tell he's a great remixer he's a great reinventor making something more modern in a sense and that's what he did with that like if you think about Bomb and Gilead to from the Clark sisters version, which I think is in the eighties to, uh, like a, almost, what, almost 20, not 20, probably like 10. What? Almost. Yeah. Almost like 20 years later, maybe in a sense to Donald Lawrence and his remix, for um finally karen's album her first album karen's first album in like 97 98 i think it was it's they're com two completely different songs and it's like it's really it's nice to it's an enjoyable moment to consume um but yeah those are my that's my introduction to karen i love that song and therefore i love her and i just love her voice i'm a big big fan of her voice um I think, yeah, next, the next episode, I'm going to talk about Karen's voice. And I think I sort of talked about it, but I'll talk about it um, in the next episode about her voice voice and how incredible it is. Um, but yeah, Donna Lawrence produced this album. It's her first live album on her record label. label. It is her highest charting album. I think it was like number 20 on the 200 charts. And then it was like number two or number one. It was one, it was one or two on uh, the independent charts. I think it was number four. No, I think it was number four on the independent charts. And then number two or one on the gospel charts. So the album starts off with The Who Doesn't Matter featuring Faith Evans. And Faith and Karen, they have this beautiful relationship, this uh, sisterly relationship. Uh, she talked about Faith being like a little sister or another sister. Oh, so she also talked about Donald being like an incredible partner, an incredible producer, an incredible um, working partner being there and like having this like genius and like sort of this like Clark sisters blood in a sense of like being so incredible and they get along so well, like 
professionally and privately. But um, Faith, so Faith and her, they've done a, a, they've done songs before together. I think like one was in like the nineties. I saw. But um, yeah, the who doesn't matter. Um, if God before us, the who doesn't matter. Well, all right, go listen to this song. It's a really good song. Go listen to this album. It's such a great album. Um, they have that like well, all right. I forget. I forget like where that would be from. It's like a little. Is it a sample or is it just something we say that they made it into a song, which is really cool. I really like it. It's an upbeat song. It start the the song is upbeat, so the album starts very upbeat. If God be for us, who the who doesn't matter? True, I think she said that. Um, the um, it was like a Bible scripture. She was saying that um, put God before the world. And he can do anything or something like that. I forgot. I should have wrote that part down. Um, the next song, Destined to Win. Um, such a beautiful song. It's like a funky little beat to it. Um, I am the head, not the tail. Greater is by, um, greater is he that is in, within me. Very inspirational, very... Um, positive that's what this album really is it's like a inspiration positive reassurance um and i love that kind of music i don't like such of the down side of gospel music the down or like the sort of sadder topics um i think she she said this album was a message from god so listen to when i am the head i am not the tail the choir throughout this whole album really holds it down. They're very solid. And I think that's a part of Donald's production. She's like, he's a perfectionist. He's a, um, he wants quality work and he definitely gets that out of Karen. I think I, I was looking, I was looking at one of the, one of the, um, behind the scenes video. And it looked like he like pointed to Karen and to like, like he motioned her to like hit a note and she like went and hit it. I think, I think that's what happened. I'm not really sure, but I was like, that's kind of funny. Um, how that came about, uh, how his like, you know, professional, his, um, quality, how quality and amazing he wants. And I know he, he pushes her to get like the best. And she really, it really is not a really a bad vocal moment on this album from her. She really is like a tip top shape on this album. She's really, they were saying this is like one of the most anticipated albums of 2015 at that time. She really delivered. This is such a great, I don't know. It's such a great album. Um, the resurrection. So I was like, when I was listening to it, I was trying to figure out what are the words, what are the words to describe the song? I'm like, the song isn't this next song, the resurrection. Uh, the one I was listening to last night that inspired this. Let me give a little review on this and to win. Um, resurrection. I was like, I was trying to figure out the words. I'm like, no, it's not Broadway. It's not such a typical gospel song. Um, and I was just like, I don't know. I don't know. So I'm looking through it. I'm, I wrote dramatic. It's very dramatic. And then I looked at an interview and she was talking about Richard Smallwood. And one of the interviewers brought up Richard Smallwood. And she was like, you know, I just love Richard Smallwood. So I'm like, okay, who, who's this? And then she's like, um, they, they, the interviewer mentioned, oh, yeah, you did, like, a cover song of his. And she's like, yeah, um, I just love Richard Smallwood. He is from, he, um, he went to Howard University with my sister Twinkie. And they just have, like, some of the writing styles. And I just love his writing style. And I love Twinkie's writing style. And they just are so similar. And then, you know, he went to Howard and he did the, um, he learned classical music. And then now he brings, he brought classical music to um, gospel. And I was like, oh, here we go. Now I know what you're talking about. Now I know what it is. It's classical. Yes, very, the orchestra, the, the, um, the whole entire orchestra from, I don't know, like the orchestra specific, um, 
instruments that are being played, but it's like a boom, 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 boom. It's probably like like a cello or something um, towards the end. And it's very dramatic. The song is so dramatic. And it's very, like, in a sense of the resurrection of Jesus, it's very dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> so it fits, like, the song so well. Um, so this is a cover. I didn't know. This is a cover of, um, what was it? Richard Smallwood's, I was going to say Roundtree for some reason. Richard Smallwood's The Re- Resurrection. Beautifully done by her. Um, Richard Smallwood nominated for a ton of Grammys back in like the 80s and 90s. Uh, I don't think he won anything. I don't think I saw anything that he won. But yeah. She's like, she loves his music. Yeah, that's what it was. She loves his music. So this is a um, a beautiful cover. The vocals on the song definitely keep up with the dramatics of the song, of the music, telling the story. Um... And to me, it's not like any, like, like, okay, now it makes sense. Because I wrote that, did I write that? Yeah, I wrote this down after I wrote, figured out what the song, what the backstory was. And I was like, this song is not like any other gospel song I've ever heard. And now it makes sense. Because when you bring two genres together, you're creating something beautiful. And, and in this case, beautiful and new. Not always you create something beautiful. But in this case, it's very beautiful. Um... Shout out to that. Shout out to them. What a great idea. And like, I think, like, this album is so fresh. What did I write down? It's, this album is so fresh. And the lyrics are so quality. The music and the vocals and what to repeat and what to say. Just like on Sunday morning, this next song, which was, I think, her first single from the um, album, Sunday Morning. Like, at the end, they sing Sunday. And it's like, yes, like, it's certain. I always find it, like, so interesting what a production standpoint, what to repeat, what to not repeat, what to sing, how to sing it. And it's like, it's such a fresh and such a beautiful, such a beautiful um album, fresh lyrics quality lyrics like i said Sunday, like sunday morning and this song is about going through stuff and you can't wait to get to church you can't wait to get to listen to your pastor sing i mean um speak a word you need some encouragement because of the stuff you've been going through and you just need to let the um the holy spirit take over and ease your soul and ease your mind and know that things are going to be okay and like i said this song is such a creative and fresh um, song. And this song was nominated for a Grammy. That was really cool. Well-deserved. Too bad it didn't win, but whatever. (laughs) I Only Call On Jesus is the next song. Um, I'm just going to point out some of my favorites. I Only Call On Jesus, such a moody, uh, jazzy feel to it. Um, sort of like R and B ish, and then I found out Missy wrote on this song, um, with her. I guess her writing partners from back in the day, or like sort of in this not back in the day because they still I guess work together with Timberland, Craig um, Bruckerman, I think his name is, and Nissan Stewart. Nissan, that's a cool name. Interesting name. Only Call Jesus um, to get you, you know, get you through the problems. And the choir, the choir, like I said, again, is holding it down in this song with uh, even just the um, ad libs of the oh, 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 just holding it down so that Karen can minister and ad lib and sort of give her like her little jazzy scats that she gets. I don't think she's done at that point. I don't think she had done a little, any of the like scatting a little scatting that she's done that she's like really good at um, i don't think she's done that until this point on only calling jesus but you know here we go missy 
Craig, Missy, again, Missy is such a, I didn't know Missy um, wrote on this. Missy is such a dynamic um, creative from R&B to pop to rap, producing her stuff, producing Fantasia, producing Tweet, producing um, um, Lady Marmalade that, you know, last week I, or a couple of weeks ago, I talked about went into the... Um, Something amazing. I forget the name of it. Um, you know, now she's doing. Now she's in the gospel thing. I think she produced, or she had a hand in producing the um, Clark Sisters movie, which came out a year ago. Shout out to that. Came out a year ago on Easter Sunday, where we were in deep inside of, freshly deep inside of the pandemic. And the thing about that is, it's so funny that they say they're like. We don't think people are going to watch, but I'm like, like, people watch Lifetime movies like Tony Braxton. People watch Tony Braxton. People watch um, the Whitney music. People watch the Aaliyah movie and criticized it. Um, so for them to say they don't think they would have gotten the numbers, maybe a little bit, maybe they wouldn't have got the numbers, but I think people are going to watch and it's going to be a good amount of people, um, whether it was a pandemic or not. My God is big. Oh my gosh, this one is so good. My God is big, so strong, so mighty, and his plan for me is victory, victory, victory. Such an inspirational song, such a reassuring song about God and how what he wants for us. And um, that Jeremiah, um, wait, do I have my Bible? No. I don't think I think it's somewhere else. The Jeremiah um scripture where it's like God wants you to be amazing and prosper. Those aren't the specific specific words, but it's something like that. Um to me the song is a little bit R and B ish. It definitely um keeps you interested with like the harmonies, the two part harmonies that Karen and I, like a background singer does that never fails, never fails. It keeps you interesting, keep uh, keeps you interested and it keeps your mind like or you're just listening to it. you can like to me on the center, I'm like hearing and feeling all these different like emotions, the way it, you know, it breaks, it stops a little bit, like not stops, like the music kind of stops. Um the little music breaks and the little jazzy like harmony that that I was talking about never fails, never fails. Really good. I love that song. And then they mix it up with um victory. Now I forget if victory. I think victory is a Clark sisters written song. Victory from they did that they did from their um 1989 like live one time or something whatever it's called album. Um. And then they also did that again. They kind of remixed it a little bit. See, here we go again with the remixing. I love when their little remixing. Their little remix again with um from a year ago almost now for they are for their virtual concert that they did. And then yeah, I really love that little mashup. Really enjoy it. That's I think that's really she said like in an interview, she was like at that time, they were like, this is like, this is for the people. This is, you can get up and dance for it. You can get up and dance to this song. You can get up and uh, have a good time. This is like a chant. My God is big. My God is strong, so mighty, so powerful. This is our chant. This is our, we're going to put this in the atmosphere for our lives during uh, that time for our church. Beautiful. Great song. And, you know, this song, like I said, the song meshes up with uh, the Clark Sisters song, Victory. I got it. I thank God. I got it. I really love that song. Great, great, great song. And then the song, the um, album ends with We Acknowledge You. Now, I was trying to figure out who wrote this song. And I couldn't really figure out because I know that song is like a staple or kind of, it's a staple. I can say that now. It's sort of a staple in... Um, the church atmosphere, the church, regular church, like my grandmother's church, um, they would sing the song, We Acknowledge You. But this one has a little remix to it. And she also did it first on her Heaven's is Telling album, which was a little bit fat. Yeah, it was a lot faster. A lot faster. More like a bop than this one. This one's like sort of um, praise and worshipy a little bit. 
uh, atmosphere to it, feeling to it. It's a slow, yeah, it's a slower version. And then, you know, um, Karen, she kind of like, I think in the beginning of the song, she kind of like, I've never really heard her like on an album or anything say, you know, thank you for coming. Thank you for supporting me. Like it was like the artist of Karen kind of jumped out and I was like, oh, that's really nice. That's really cool. And that's my little review. So I'm going to take a little second, take a little break. And when I come back, we're going to talk about the reviews and some deluxe stuff I didn't figure out. I didn't know that was out there. Be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's wrap this up for the Destined to Win little review that I have. Um, I didn't know there was a deluxe edition to it. I was watching an interview again, and the dude was like, okay, so, you know, I need to do a little shopping. So, after this, you know, I'm going to go to Walmart and pick up the deluxe edition. And she's like, yeah, yeah, you know, you're right. And so, I didn't know that because it's not on YouTube. None of this is on YouTube. And on the deluxe, okay, so Karen made it seem like her sisters did a song, the Clark sisters did a song with her, and then, um, well, the Clark sisters did a song, and then Kiara did a song with her, but what it was, it was a um, sort of mini tribute to um, Andre Couch, who I think just passed away that year, of his song, Where is Where Jesus Is, I'm sorry. The song is called Where Jesus Is. Really great harmonies. I mean, it's classic Clark Sisters harmony. There, Okay, so there's no, like, actual audio available. I guess you have to buy it. Excuse me. You have to buy the deluxe, but I hate that the deluxe isn't online. Like, like one of my favorite deluxe from Kelly Rowland... Her um her album Talk a Good Game, great great album from start to finish, and then she has deluxe songs from start the the um feet to F- feet to the fire and then Love Me Till I Die. Love those songs, especially Love Me Till I Die. I'm like, why wasn't this on the regular? Why wasn't this on the regular album? <sighs> So then, like, I went and bought, I thought it was supposed to be on the Target Deluxe, and I thought I, either they didn't have it, or it just wasn't there, because I bought it, I bought the actual copy, and it's not on my album, but whatever, but I'm like, the Deluxe, so these songs are nowhere to be found, uh, the audio, there's only, like, video footage evidence of it. Um, that people took because I know they recorded the they recorded some of it and put it behind in the behind the scenes like to get promotion but they didn't like release the full thing it's like a minute clip of it and so it's just you know she was like it's just us you know the Clark sisters you know we never rehearse a lot of certain things and most of, and it's, it's another spontaneous moment and it's such a great spontaneous moment it's just like the clark sisters when they get together and they sing and i've said this before it's just like it just sounds so great and so full and it's only four women it's only four of them and it's but it just sounds so full and so vibrant and they know each other so well and they know what to hit they've been hitting it for years so like okay you hit this you hit that i'll hit this when i go up, you go there they just know it and it's like such an incredible experience to see um also um kiara so kiara didn't do a song she just like did a little ad-libbing um and reiterating where Jesus is. And it was very, um, the, this is on YouTube. This And it's very like jazzy. Um, yeah, very jazzy. That's what I say. She has some really cute notes. Yeah, so that's it for the deluxe. Too bad it's not on line anywhere like that. Like the physical, the, the actual audio. Um... And like she said, this the, let's get into the reviews. The reviews are incredible. Um, Karen did say this this album, this 
these songs or like message a message from God to, you know, keep going. You know, we're going through a lot. Even at that time, she was like, we're going through a lot. Even today, we're still going through a lot. Stay encouraged, stay positive, um, keep going. You can win with God. And let me get into the reviews. The reviews. Oh my gosh. Are we still recording? We're still recording. The reviews were insane. Do you hear me? The reviews, like I said, once people were like, this is the most anticipated album of the year. The reviews from the New York Times. This one kind of scared me a little bit. It said, there are three or four places on the record and they are extended ex- and they are extended sequences. Not just moments where a listener can start to worry. Do I really deserve these riches? And I was like, this is so funny. But such a great... What a beautiful thing to say. Um, the Less Is More is great. There's only t- 10 songs on the album. Which is great. I, I can, you know, you can get through it, feel good, and still be encouraged. Um, this next one said, This into one is a powerful declaration of faith and victory marked by the impeccable and unparalleled vocals of one of gospel music's greatest treasures. And to me, it's really one of her greatest albums. To me, it's better than Finally Can. Don't judge me. And then you, I think after Finally Can, there is The Heavens Are Telling and her voice isn't 100% as what it used to be. But, you know, it's a Karen Clark share production. So, yeah. Go out. Go listen to it. I listened to this one on YouTube. You can also purchase it, I'm sure. You can't stream it. I don't know why this one isn't on streaming. That's the sucky part. Sunday Morning is on streaming. And I think that's the only single from the album that's on streaming. Um... But yeah, hopefully everybody's having a great little Easter. It's nice and sunny out here in Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, I have some food I'm going to go get. And I'm just going to relax today and have a nice little Sunday off. Um, thank you for listening to another this uh, another episode of Child the Podcast. You can follow me on Instagram at my love, my need tonight. Leave a comment. Tell me what are your favorite songs. Tell me what you think about this album. Is it your favorite album? Is your least? Is it your least favorite album? Uh, yeah. Let me know, please. Let me know. I want to know. I want to know. I want to know what's your favorite songs. My favorite song, like I said, I think is "My God Is Big." Um, I do like Sunday Morning. But I think My God is Big. That's the one. Oh, Dustin to Win. No, I think My God is Big. I think that's my favorite one. Every now and then, I'll want to listen to The Who Doesn't Matter. The Resurrection, like I said, is incredible. You only call on Jesus. Oh, my God is big. Okay, yeah, my two favorites are really My God is big and we acknowledge you. I really do love that they remixed it and made it slower. Like a little thank you for coming. So, yeah, okay, all right. I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. And I'll be back in a couple days for another one.